This is a continuation of the design library discussion from the last video. One of the things that you'll want to uh, check for, and this is uh, Windows 10, and I am in uh, File Explorer, and the View Settings, we want to be able to see hidden items, so make sure that that checkbox is selected. We'll come back to that here in just a second. What that does is if the um, uh, default design library is deleted, uh, upgraded, somehow uh, changed location. We need to be able to add a file location and under C drive, if that hidden files and uh, folders is not highlighted, you won't see program data. We need to be able to get into program data and then go to SolidWorks, SolidWorks 2017 in this case, pick up the design library and hit OK. Alright, so we have the design library that is in my Dropbox or on my flash drive and then the uh, the default design library uh, for uh, for SolidWorks. So one of the things that is, uh, is always an issue with uh, design library items is when you d t put too much definition the um, the geometry is looking for very specific items to be related to or have definitions with. So the problems that I had on the uh, the last video, um, I went through and I it was just kind of looking at uh, what previous features had done. And so if we open up for open up one of the uh, the existing we can see how this was uh, was created so the library feature at the top references dimensions the the basic strid so when we look at the origin the origin can be uh, pretty much tied to the basic strid and then the sketch the sketch creates the plane and then the plane uh, creates the feature which are all independent fairly independent of uh, other geometry. So we're going to try this uh, this technique uh, based on um, uh, our countersink data. So let's go new, part inch fractional. We'll go into the uh, the front plane, and our initial body is just to create something big enough to hold the uh, hold the geometry. We're going to extrude boss base one inch, and it doesn't really matter. I like to go back. Okay, so this gives us the uh, the base geometry. Let's start with point at the uh, the center, and then I'll do a uh, a center line and another center line. Okay, and then select the midpoint and make those to the midpoint. Also can make both of those lines equal. Find the point, go to a midpoint, and then whatever works for our size, 0.25. Okay, so one of the issues that we encountered was that when we put the revolve sketch on the front top or right plane is the geometry didn't always follow uh, the selected plane in the uh, the new uh, in the part that we were inserting the um, uh, the library feature into so I'm going to give this a uh, name of location and then for the plane we have the point and the um, the line and under reference geometry we can pick up the plane and this will be in the in the uh, the top plane and then that gives me something that i can sketch to i'm going to start with the uh, the center line be sure that i select the midpoint and we'll just make that coincident We'll put in the um, the sketch geometry for the uh, for the countersink. Okay, 
Okay, so that gives us the shape. We need the angles. So 59 degrees, half angle gives us 118 degrees included. And then 30 degrees gives us 60 degrees included. And we're going to stay with the, um, the number 3. And I did not mean to grab that one, so let's go a little bit closer. 0.109 on the length. 0.109 on the diameter, and then the body, 0.25. Okay, so since I didn't rename those as I was creating them, I need to click, and I'm going to use these later, creating configurations. We're going to test this out and make sure that it works on a couple of cases before I go to the trouble of putting in the configuration. So... When I do put in the configuration, I want to be ready with the body diameter, pilot length, and I'm going to try to avoid spaces because this is an address. If I did need to uh, make it uh, more readable by adding spaces, I would put an underscore. And this is the pilot diameter. Okay, so that gives me my geometry. Features. Revolve cut and go ahead and accept. Okay, so I don't really need to see the location, I don't really need to see the plane, and all three of those are going to be selected. So, one of the reasons that I would save this as a part separate, um, maybe in a uh, another location from the design library, is that if I miss one of these items in the um, uh, the save as to a library feature, it's difficult to um, or doesn't allow you to um, go back and add that that um, that item to your uh, to your feature list. So this is defaulted over to uh, my system files. The design library is the last one I put in. So C drills and guess that I wasn't quite in there. Let's double click. And we'll go ahead and hit save. All those items get the library feature. Looks very similar to the item we just um, we just looked at from the um, uh, from the features. So the test then is let's put one of these items out of position. So top, where we drew in the front before, we'll check with a larger and going a different direction. So I generate my base geometry. Go ahead and accept that. And now when I come over to the design library, we're going to go to my design library, drag the center drill in. Right, it's looking for, it picked up the sketch point, so I really did not want to be on the origin when I created that. So let's go back and see if we can correct it. Right, so in the design library, let's open up the, uh, the C drills. And the location, well, let's just go back directly to the uh, to the original sketch. All right, so I'm going to see if I can remove that geometry. Same with the location. Can we break it away from the origin and put it at a, a new location? All right, concentric to our geometry. And have everything follow it. Okay, edit the plane, make sure that it tries to update. So, the point location that it grabbed, and the reason that it went for the um, sketch point is that this defaulted to the origin, point one at origin. All right, so that would not be my first choice. Let's go ahead and delete that out. See if I can pick up the center point still wanting to default to the face 
So if I hit F5 on the keyboard, I will get my filters. So let's see if I filter for a vertice, will let me have. And there we go, filter sketch points. Right, so still not quite getting the uh, the sketch point. Okay, so let's double check the sketch. All right, so that one's free to move. Double check the. Um, okay, and there is a a point there. And I really, at this stage, don't want to delete that um, delete that sketch and try to reproduce it. Okay, make sure that stays shown. Uh, maybe we can hide the body. Yeah, actually, I'm not seeing the bodies in the library feature. Interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's see. Still didn't want the sketch. Now I'm just getting button happy again. Didn't want to not want to add the sketch. I wanted to edit the feature. Port point origin comes out. There's the point. All right, so that geometry looks much better. And then let's go for the sketch. And we're looking for coincident. So that one comes off. Also coincident. And did I go back and hide? Location. Oh, there it is. Okay, kind of got lost in the shuffle there. All right, so let's bring that back, that point back to coincident on the center line. And then the center line can be coincident to our intersection. That brings everything back up pretty well. And then we will show the Base feature, hide, let's double check, and save. All right, so hopefully all this effort into redefining. All right, so it's looking for an edge. Finds the edge, gives me the, um, the correct geometry. All right, so best practice would be to draw that sketch out in open air, stay away from the origin, make it completely independent, and then create our geometry now that we've tested and verified. And I think every time that I've created a design library feature for any any item, it's required testing and a little bit of um, uh, work workarounds as, uh, as it goes. Right. We'll try a, a few more of those here in a second. All right, so now we can set up for the uh, the configuration where I don't just want a number three. All right, so if I were to single click and single click, I can rename the default to number three. Um, we have the uh, the two ways of generating the uh, the geometry. So if I go into the sketch, we'll double click, make sure that I can see all of my items, all of my uh, dimensions, or at least the majority of them. And then if I add the configure feature, then I would go in and pick up those items. So double click. Uh, configuration three. I want to go with the body diameter first, double click, adds it to the list. The uh, pilot diameter, that's the pilot angle, pilot diameter, and then the pilot length. 
All right, so if I go back to a number one and we jump over to our, our chart, 0 0.125, 0 0.047, 0 0.047. Okay, and then a number two. Oh, and I double clicked, so I need to grab all that again. Okay, and it's basically duplicating everything that was there 188, 078, 078. Okay, and then we'll go to a number four. And number four would be 16th above that, so 0.313. And eighth of an inch and eighth of an inch, so 0 0.125, 0 0.125. All right, so we could populate out the rest of this uh, chart as we, um, as we need it. And then when I close this, it's going to report back that we added items 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we'll just put that in, in order in the sequence. And then a quick check, item 1, and rebuild. Okay, that doesn't look like it changed sides. So it changes size. Oh, I may have uh, missed the bottom of the screen because of my screen resolution where it was okay. Oh, there they are. All right, so the sizes should be there. Well, let's edit it and see if they show up as being driven. Okay, configure feature, double click so that we can see the, okay, so it defaulted them all back because I didn't hit apply. Okay, so now the memory test, the number one center drill. And a body diameter of 0 0.125, 0 0.047, 0.047, number two, 0 0.188, 0 0.078, 0 0.078, we're okay with the 109, and then 0 0.313. 0.125, 0 0.125. Okay, so let's apply it and then hit OK. And double check. Two gets a little bit bigger. Three gets a little bit bigger. Let it go ahead and rebuild. Four gets a little bit bigger. All right, so at this point, there's not a, um, not a design table. If I get much more or more detail, then I may want to consider going over to the Excel file to drive it with um, a little more geometry. So I haven't saved yet. Go ahead and make the save. Pick up a new part. And we'll try the cylinder in a different, um, different position. Extrude it out. Okay, so the check will be we drag in the center drill located on the face. 
pick uh, which item we want out of the uh, the configuration so the configurations are good uh, depending on how it was created it may ask for an edge or a face I'm okay with both of those and the geometry is working and when I go back in to edit the feature the, it will allow me to update and change as long as I have not dissolved the library feature so as long as I have access to that folder either on the cloud drive or on the flash drive then I'm going to be able to uh, make that modification. If it comes to a point where I need to uh, make this completely independent of the design library, then I could dissolve the feature, but I'm going to be left with whichever uh, whichever configuration was last put into the uh, to the geometry. So no, don't save. Um, We'll do one, two more tests. So just real quick. Generate a revolve feature to test the validity. We put in a number four, pick the edge, and looks good on the geometry. And then having uh, looked at the other other style, the other um, design library item, let's go ahead and extrude out a rectangle and see what we can see. Okay, so when I tell it to pick an edge, well, we have an edge. And actually, it put it in there pretty well. Um, I would expect that we would still have to position for... Well, it wouldn't be that one. Right? Since we drove it with the location sketch, we would need to place that. And that is coming up with an amber. The concentric is going to fail. But if that's um, my worst case scenario, I'm still pretty happy about that. I can... Remove the uh, the concentric. Come back in, put a couple of dimensions or relations. And end up defining. So, not often that I need just center drill geometry in a um, rectangular prism, but knowing that it works or almost works is is probably a, uh, a little bit better than do I really need to have that second item that pretty much is doing the same thing, just locating more on the face. All right, so if you need to create that geometry, uh, you want to build in the design library features, go through a, through a process, but then spend some time going through the, uh, the design library, find something that's close, and these are sheet metal forming tools. Um, and that process even changed a little bit. We'll find something that is uh, is close and be able to um, to build in that geometry. So full-on parts are going to be for assemblies. Smart components are going to be for assemblies because they're going to create geometry uh, from from the part geometry from the assembly geometry. So pretty much features and Whole patterns, keyways, use that as your uh, as your base reference to get started. But most importantly, try to keep your geometry as independent as possible from planes, the origin, other um, other items that will um, force you to to make for uh, force you to make decisions on the um, uh, the relations.